Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now March 15th of 2024 and given that all divisions over at the Walt Disney Company are going through endless revisions, all due in part to Bob Iger's cost cutting measures and let's not forget about everything happening between himself and the board of directors and the constant shakeup that has been going on now for a couple of weeks that's already wreaking havoc on divisions like Marvel Studios as well as Lucasfilm for example. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So for those of you that do not know, Disney does indeed own ABC and hence owns shows like the Jimmy Kimmel Live Show, Good Morning America, as well as The View with Joy Behar. And speaking about Joy Behar, this is where things begin to unravel quite quickly when it comes to her overall defense and her overall stance to protecting Bob Iger at all costs and the Walt Disney Company as we speak. Now, already we know that Joy Behar has endlessly defended Defended Disney throughout the years. She has gone through pretty much defending all aspects about everything wrong about it and everything that Bob Iger has been pushing with his agenda into movies and television, etc., etc. However, this is where things begin to get worse because we already know what's been going on with Disney Star Wars. I think a lot of you have come to the realization that Disney Star Wars is like its own thing apart from George Lucas's Star Wars. Now, there's a lot of George Lucas fans that have been very upset and angered about what Disney has been doing to the brand year after year to the point where now, honestly, it's reaching to a point where people just flat out don't even care anymore. However, on top of all of this, with all divisions of the Walt Disney Company showing no signs of improvement, one major development has to do with Joy Behar of The View and her response to the woke backlash surrounding Lucasfilm and Disney's push with their agenda in the Star Wars franchise. Behar went on to deliver the following. As a woman, I think it's very responsible for what Disney and Bob Iger have been pushing to accomplish with their direction with many of their brands, and I think their greatest move they made was with the Star Wars. It's about time they hire female writers, directors, and producers to get the job done correctly, and to also star more women in these films. You see, that's the great thing about that brand. With Star Wars, Disney has this outlet to allow women to shine and to remain in the spotlight and limelight with endless possibilities. I thought it was disgusting behavior from fans of how they rejected such fine individuals like Charmaine Chinoy and Leslie Headland, who are brilliant filmmakers, by the way, from what I gather. As a feminist and someone who absolutely supports empowerment with women, I couldn't be more happier about Bob Iger's push to normalize this within the Star Wars brand. I think those running everything over there, of course, have gone out of shape. What is it with Lucasfilm, right? Kathleen Kennedy, she does an excellent job with everything. She really raised the bar to create an outlet as well to empower women in Disney movies and series. I may not know much about Star Wars, but I know enough that it needed more st women to star in the brand in their stories, and seemingly so many fans are afraid of that push by Disney that I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. I just think these type of fans need to shut it already and keep their opinions to themselves because they are helping nobody at this point. It's absolutely terrible behavior to what they say about these female directors and Kathleen Kennedy, who has done nothing but great and stunning work running the show. I give Bob my full support of what he has accomplished with the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion getting inserted into the many brands that they own, such as Star Wars, and it's about time that we have many women take the spotlight and those from different backgrounds and beliefs to deserve a chance to star in these projects. I mean, I was discussing this the other day with friends of mine, that they need to really do this for years before I think the naysayers begin to accept what is long overdue. We have had way too many male-driven roles in many brands, and Star Wars being one of them. It's what Kathy likes to say, it's a galaxy full of so many people. I am rooting for Miss Headland with her goals to empower women in the upcoming Acolyte series, and we have already made arrangements to have her on the show to really discuss what inspired her to move forward with this project. Now guys, let me just stop here about what Joy Behar is obviously pushing and defending here. She is defending everything wrong with Disney. And look, that's not to say that hiring women is wrong or putting females in Star Wars is a bad thing. But when you do it through an agenda, when you do it through 
you know, some kind of overall agenda-driven strategy that's going to really steer away from proper storytelling or character development, that's when you have a problem. All right, there are endless examples of fine female characters over the past number of decades that have worked very well to the point where you don't even cross your mind and think to yourself that, oh, it's a woman. Nobody thinks like that. I don't think people thought like that with Sarah Connor, Ellen Ripley, and among others, for example, like Beatrix Kiddo. I know I use those examples a lot, but they're one of the most recognizable ones. And at the end of the day, Joy Behar is another example of one who defends Disney's nonsense. She is 100% attempting to protect Bob Iger and his push for DEI. And this comes from Bob Iger as well. This is the same exact person that says that DEI is not an agenda. And at the same exact time, he confirms that it is an agenda and that he wants to quiet down the noise. So it makes no sense at all. It never made any sense to anybody, and that's exactly why the board of directors have been very much split for the past number of months. So moving on forward, all right, she goes on to conclude, she's what Star Wars, I think, needs. She's talking about Kathleen Kennedy and who Disney needs right now to really empower women with their new generation of content on the horizon. Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy deserve more credit and really don't deserve the criticism that they are getting from these fake fans that are, as far as I'm concerned, nothing more than posers who pretend to support Disney's projects. I mean, so what if Star Wars is made by women for women? How is that such a big deal, you know? So there you have, again, Joy Behar really just spewing nonsense about Disney Star Wars she knows nothing about Star Wars or whatever it was created by George Lucas back in 77 onwards. And I think that this is another moment where you have to come to the realization that they are going to garner whoever is going to speak on live television or whoever's going to defend Disney through interviews via correspondence or, you know, all these different award shows or whatever it may be. Disney's taking full advantage of 2024 month by month to have people like Jimmy Kimmel, to have people like Joy Behar, Whoopi Goldberg, and among others to defend Disney. So again, it's not a shocker that she's really defending those like Leslie Headland, Kathleen Kennedy, Charmaine Chinoy, and saying that what they are doing has been long overdue. And this, I think, is the bigger problem. The bigger picture here is that there really is an agenda going on over at Disney, and Bob Iger keeps repeatedly you know, claiming that this does not exist, that there's no such thing, that Disney is not about engaging in culture wars, and that they will never be like that, yet at the same exact time, that's exactly what they're doing with stripping away from George Lucas's vision. I mean, heck, Leslie Headland, the director of The Acolyte, flat out said that she deliberately wanted to get away from the George Lucas burden of his vision of Star Wars. So there you have it again. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. Yeah.